everyone, how are you today? This is Mark. I'm doing just great. Thanks for asking. You have to be quiet during a lecture at university. Or you must be quiet during a lecture at university. Evil has to be the reason for such deaths. Or evil must be the reason for such deaths. Students have to learn English for their future career or students must learn English for their future career. In this lesson, we're going to look at the difference between have to and must. So stay tuned. Let me tell you first that have to is used mostly in American English. Must is used also in American English, but on property signs. For example, you will see that uh, written. Visitors must report to admission offices, for example. Must is slowly disappearing from the language. So it's 50% less used now than in the past. So it's slowly disappearing from the language. They're both modal verbs and uh, they uh, follow the following rules. So with have to, the positive sentence would follow the following um, formula. Subject plus have to plus the base of the verb plus the object and then the time expression if any. With must instead, the formula goes subject plus must plus the base of the verb plus object, and then the time expression, if any. Now, this is easy. Remember that must, we don't need to. This is one thing to remember. When we write a negative sentence instead, we need the subject plus the auxiliary plus not, the auxiliary of the tense we are using in this case. So we could be do, does, did, or uh, will, etc plus have to, plus the base of the verb, plus object, and then the time expression. If you use it in a negative sentence, have to, it means no obligation or necessary. Instead, if you use must in a negative sentence, the formula would be subject, plus must, plus not, plus the base of the verb, plus the object, and then the time expression, if any. And in this case, if you use must in a neg negative sentence, it means prohibition. I will give you two examples. So the first one with have to. You don't have to call me before coming over. It's not necessary. This is what I'm saying. With must instead, you mustn't drink bleach. It'll kill you. So you cannot, you're not allowed, or you, it, will, it will kill you anyway if you drink bleach. So you mustn't. Now, let's go on with the, uh, with the interrogative a sentence. So we need WH question word, if any. So WH question word would be uh, where, who, how, what, etc. Then we need the auxiliary, then the subject, then have to, and then the base of the verb and maybe the object or the time expression um, in a question. So it depends here, it would change. If you want to watch a lesson on making questions, you can click here. For an, an interrogative sentence with must, you have to use WH question word if you have one, then uh, must, then the subject, then the uh, base of the verb and then uh, the time expression or object, if any. This is very, very rare, okay? We, we usually don't use it in a question. Okay, now the most important thing is when and how we use these two. The first rule is use the modal verb have to to express strong obligation. This strong obligation is based on a rule or law and obviously have to is impersonal. So somebody else tells you to do something. Impersonal. 
Instead, must, we use it to indicate a personal, so personal, recommendation. Now, I have two examples, and let me show you the two examples that I wrote. These are the examples that I gave you at the beginning. And the first one we have to is, you have to be quiet during a lecture at university, I said. In this case, have to is a strong obligation, right? I'm telling you because you cannot speak during a, le a lecture at university. Instead, if I say you must be quiet during a lecture at university, this is a recommendation I'm saying to someone, okay? This is the difference. Then another difference or another usage of have to is to say how likely something is. And in my example, in my introductory example, was evil has to be the reason for such deaths. Has to be the reason. And this is likely. So it's probable that evil was the reason for such deaths. Instead, if you use it with must, use must to express conviction or certainty about something. So evil must be the reason for such deaths. So I'm convinced that evil was the reason for such deaths. Now, the third usage is uh, for have to, to indicate that it's important to do something. For example, the, 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 the introductory example was students have to learn English for their future career. By this example, I'm saying that it's important uh, for students to learn English for their future careers. Instead, if I use it with must, indicates a necessity. So, students must learn English for their future career. So, it's necessary for students to learn English for their future career. So, you can see that it changes meaning. They can be both used with the past. So, the past of have to is had to. Remember that if you make a question or a negative sentence, you need did for the past, right? Of have to. Now, instead, if you use must with the past, it would be must have plus past participle. The, uh, for the future in the have to, um, we have will have to. So, I will have to do something uh, next week, for example. So, it is used. For the must, we don't have future. And so, we use have to. And uh, one last thing that I want to say about um, uh, have to is that you can use have got to um, in British English instead of have to. It's the same thing. Now, let's recap. So in this lesson, we talked about the difference between have to and must. Have to is used for a strong obligation. Instead, must is for necessity, certainty, or personal recommendation. So use have to for a strong obligation based on a rule, a law imposed by an institution or by somebody. Must instead is personal and is used in the present and in the past. In the future, we just used have to. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, requests, or if you want to uh, write your own example using both have to and must, you may do so under this video. Please don't forget to share the lesson if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Have a great day and see you next week with a new lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.